Good afternoon viewers at home. You are welcome to the second part of Sex Theory. This is Mathematics with Dr. OJ. Can you subscribe to my video channel by clicking the subscribe button below the video and the notification bell so that anytime I upload a new video, you will be duly informed. Thank you. Uh, in this video, we shall start with uh, uh, terminologies in set theory. In the last video about set theory, we stopped at empty set or null set. So today, we shall start with power set, which will be the fifth terminology we shall be considering. Power set. What do you mean by power set? This is the set. This is the set of all subsets. Of all subsets. This is the set of all subsets of a given set. Of a given set. Let A be a set. Let A be a set. Okay? The set. The set of all subsets of A, of all subsets of A, denoted, denoted by P of A, is called, is called the power set of A, the power set of A. Okay, so if A, if A, if set A, as, let's say if set A, let's say if set A, if set A as N elements, if set A as N elements, then its power set, then its power set, that is P of A, will be equal to the number, the power set, that is P of A that contains 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 exactly contains exactly two raised to the power n elements. Two raised to the power n elements. For example, so let A let's set A contain element 1, 2, 3. Okay? Now, the power set of A, the power set of uh, set A, is a collection of all possible subsets of A. The first element in that collection is a null set. Don't forget we are told that every set contains a null set. Because a set is a subset of itself. A set is also a superset of itself. So every set will definitely contain uh, a null set. So we can have a pair of set with element one, a pair of set with element two, we can have a pair of set with element three, you can have a pair of one and two, you can have a pair of one and three, we can have a pair of two and three, we can equally have uh, the entire set, one, two, three. So these are the possible subsets in the power set of A. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the power set of A contains uh, how many elements now? It contains eight pairs of uh, uh, subsets, okay? So in this case, you can say power set of A Power set of A has um, two raised to the power n elements, which is uh, two raised to the power. How many elements does A have? That's uh, three. So the power set of uh, A now contains how many elements? Two raised to the power three is what? What is equal to eight. So that the power set of A contains uh, eight, okay, elements, contains eight elements. So the next one is universal set, 
universal set. Okay? Now, this is a bigger set. This is a bigger set. You know, that contains that contains uh, other sets, other smaller sets, other smaller sets, smaller sets called uh, subsets. So, in other words, the normal set contains a uh, subset. Now, let's look at set notation. Set notation. What do you mean by set notation? That's number seven we're going to consider here. Set notations. Okay? These are the symbols. These are symbols. These are symbols that are used in set uh, theory. They are symbolic representation. Some of these are, some of these are, some of these symbols include the universal set, which could be written this way, as universal set, universal set, universal set, Kaaba, this because this means member of, this means uh, not a member of, not a member of, a member of, uh, this means uh, the union, union, we have a lot of them, we have a lot of them. So all these symbolic representation come under set notation. We have a lot of them. This means uh, this cup means uh, intersection of and so on and so forth. Okay. Now we move to let's start with the union of uh, sets. Union of sets. Okay. The union of any sets A. The union of any two sets, any two sets, let's say A and B, A and B, is the set of, is the set of all those elements, all those elements, set of all those elements, X, such that Set of all those elements X such that X belongs, so that X belongs to at least, look at that statement, to at least, to at least one of the sets, one of the sets A and B. So the element X belongs to at least, that implies that the element X could be found in A, it could be in B. It could also be in A and uh, B. That's why we said it contains at least at least elements that belong to A or B or A and B. Okay? So, it is denoted by it is denoted that the union of elements A and B I mean, set A and B is denoted by A of B. That's A union B. So, mathematically, in set notation, A union B could be, if we have an element X in A, or X in B, or X in A and uh, B. Okay? It could be in A, it could be in B, it could be both. It could be in both. Okay? Now, let's look at an example. Example to show the union of uh, sets. If A, set A, contains 2, 3, 4, and set B contains 1, 3, 4, then A union B, which is a set of the collection of both elements in A and B, will be 1, because 1 is in B. You can pick 2, you can pick 3, 3 will be taken once, not twice. I'm going to pick four. So A union B 
is a collection of uh, elements in A or in B or in both A and uh, B. Now let's look at uh, a simple proof here. A simple proof. A simple, very simple proof. Okay? Let's just look at the simple proof. It's an example. Example. Okay? Let's have an example here. Proof. Proof that for any set A and B, Prove that for any set A and B, one, A is a subset of A union B, two, B is a subset of uh, A union B. Okay? So how do we establish uh, this proof? How do we establish uh, this proof? Okay? How do we establish? Let's look at the proof. 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 Now, let's, for one, let element x be in A. Let element x be in A. Then, x is in A union B, by definition. Because we are told that that element will be in at least one of the sets A and B. So if element x is in A, the video says that x is automatically in A union B. So, A is a subset of A union B. So in other words, variably, that means x is in A, is, is in A union B. It's as simple as that. The same goes similarly for the second proof. So if x is in B, just like the same way we prove this. Then, x is in A union B, or B union A. It's the same thing, by definition, just the same way. So, if element x is in B, automatically x will be in A, because of the definition. Okay, then by definition. Therefore, therefore, B, B is a subset of A you know, you can see how simple that proof is. Now let's look at uh, the intersection of sets. The intersection of sets. What do we mean by intersection of sets? That would be item number nine. Intersection. Intersection of sets. Okay? Now, the intersection, the intersection of two sets of two sets A and B is the set of all those elements all those elements X you know such that X belongs to A and B yes to both A and B X belongs to both A and B and is denoted by and is denoted by and is denoted by a cap b and is denoted by a cap b we use cap for intersection while we use cup for union okay so if if a intersection b is empty then we set a Intersection B is disjoint. Then A and B, then A and B are said to be disjoint. That's a disjoint set. Okay? That's said to be disjoint. Full stop. Now, we define mathematically A intersection B as a set, say X in A and uh, X in B. That this x is an element that is found in A, is only found in, uh, in B. So if A has element 1, 2, 3, 4, and B contains elements um, 1 and 3, then A intersection B will be a set that contains uh, 1 is common to A and B, 1. What is common again? 3. 
So that is uh, A intersection B. Now the last aspect we consider here now is the complement. The complement. Okay? That's item 10. Complement of set. Now, what do we mean by complement? If A and B are two sets, if there are two sets, then complement of B, complement of B relative to A, relative to A is the set, is the set of all those elements, set of all those elements x in A such that x is not in B. Yes. That's the set of uh, uh, element B relative to element A. It is denoted by A difference B. That's, that's one way of denoting it. Or we can say A intersection B complements. Because it means that uh, or besides, yes, that is element X is in A, but it's not in B. Okay? Now, mathematically, mathematically, it could be written this way. That is, uh, using set notation, A difference B could be a set such that X is in A and uh, X is not in B. Another way of saying that is X is in A and uh, X, you know, is in B complement. So, whichever form, both of them are correct. Okay? Now, um, so clearly, clearly, A difference B is a proper subset of, uh, I'm sorry, is a subset of A. A difference B, this. Why? Remember, A difference B now is a subset in this set A. It's not in B. Because the element X in A is, is an element that is found in A difference B. So that element is not in B. That's why we said X is in A and X is in B complement. Because this X not in B is equivalent to X is in B complement. So, let U be a universal set. Let U be a universal set. Then, B complement will be U difference B. Okay? So, if we have a universal set, so I will have to find the complement of B with respect to universal sets. So, that B is all elements that are in universal set but are not in uh, B. So, let's look at an example. Let's look at an example here. Let's look at an example. Okay. Example. Example. If A is a set that contains 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, B is a set that contains 3, 4, 5. Then, then A difference B is now elements that are found in A but which are not in B. So you move uh, um, 3, 4, 5, okay? Elements in A not in B. If you remove 3, if you remove 4, you have uh, 1 and uh, 2. So those are the elements in A but not in B. So with this, we have come to the second part of our set theory. So in our next video, we shall continue with other aspects of uh, set theories, set theory that is not covered in this video. Thanks and God bless you. Please subscribe to my video channel by clicking the subscribe button below the video.